Hey everybody, welcome back, Northern Lion, Binding of Isaac. Let's go. Why do they call it the Binding of Isaac if there's 11 characters in it? You ever think about that? Probably not, huh? You ever catch me outside? How about that? Okay. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, FY8P18XA. We got three numbers in there. That's uh, pretty good, as we know from the thing that I made up like two episodes ago. The numbers give the seed its strength. And the letters give this seed its Zane. So a 3 out of 8 strength at a 5 out of 8 Zane. You know, that's got potential. It means you can't actually get, you know, an 8 out of 8 unless you had a character that was both a number and a letter. You know, that's not possible. But I would allow it if we got o o o o o o o o It's magic, you know. o o o o o o o gonna be one of those episodes, huh? <clears throat> oh, that was a little dicey there. Okay, so well, uh, I'll sacrifice a little bit. Come to this room. That was slightly dangerous, but this ended up actually working out fairly nicely for us. And considering we have placenta and a little bit of, of rogue HP, a little bit of extra HP, I wouldn't mind being able to get to that fifth cent so we could actually create uh, an arcade on the next floor. Maybe get IV bag and start balling out of control. Oh, 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 it's magic! Looking for a bomb as well. We got two uh, tinted rocks, so... One bomb might not even be enough to, to take full advantage of that, but it's enough to... It's enough to dream. There we go, okay. So our fifth scent gives us as good a chance as anything else. We just want one more bomb that we probably will not get, but honestly, like attack fly right off the bat, that could be our three out of ten strength. Or three out of eight strength, sorry. Got very confused there temporarily. Um, that is perfectly decent for killing a lot of these enemies, so uh, we'll leave the spirit hearts. It's nice that we have the half black heart at least to keep us in the game here uh, when it comes to uh, deal with the devil purposes, but you know, last run, we it was too easy. It's fine. It's not like I'm, I'm disappointed by the way the last run went. It was actually great, but we're due for maybe a little bit of difficulty here. And I wouldn't mind, you know, some controlled difficulty with the little Zane head. You know what I mean? Like some notes of Zane. Good, good start just walking into the fire to remove like one of your biggest advantages. So these are good trinkets, but Curved Horn is the, the one that's chief amongst them, I think. Uh, although I will say Occasional Holy Mantle has been very good. Originally, that's an item, or a trinket, I guess I should say, that I was somewhat skeptical of, because you're like, ah, you know, I'd rather have the real deal than the Diet Holy Mantle. But the, the truth of the matter is that it's not really Diet Holy Mantle. Like, it, a lot of the time, it actually hooks you up with that Holy Mantle taste with none of the calories. Dark Bomb, obviously, like, also fantastic. That's not a secret room. I would have, I would have bet my life on it. Like a Mumford and Sons song. Is that Mumford and Sons? I don't know. It's, it's in the Beard Rock category. And I always associate that with, like, you know, Mumford and Sons and Old Crow Medicine Show. Might not be Mumford and Sons, though. HP. Not what I was hoping for. Ooh, this is interesting. I'll take a little Delirium even though I sort of hate it um, because I'm a masochist in that department and obviously I'll work towards the Guppy transformation which we have not been able to bring to fruition lately. But the run is otherwise like really completely fine. Mostly as a result of that Curved Horn pickup admittedly but um, I would love to get like a spirit heart and I realize we squandered the last one but I would like really love to get a spirit heart the easiest way to do that without a doubt is just to get like a couple of red hearts and have dark bum pick them up but we've made some sacrifices for the for the good of the team here went down to our starting level of HP just to just to pick up some weird deal with the devil stuff and now it's time for you know us to have dividends paid Sounds like a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Dividends paid. David Cage 
has written a game in which you play as a cyborg banker, but he's also on the inside. He's a whistleblower because he hates corruption. Dividends paid. You could choose to uh, seize the means of production. You could choose to keep your mouth shut and, and bank your, uh, you know, $122 million bonus. Or you could, you know, be a real person and be a, a multi-layered and, and complicated individual. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's a David Cage game. You can only choose those two. Anyway, I'm not anti-David Cage. I'm actually, I'm pro-David Cage because I've never played a David Cage game. But I love the idea of it. And I think that's where I will choose to stay for now. Unless Detroit ends up being amazing, in which, in which case I'll, uh, I'd love to take a look at it. I still need to play Until Dawn. That's like... Until Dawn is my own personal Everest because it highlights the depth of my laziness. Where I'm like, I would love to play Until Dawn. I think that game is like a 10 out of 10 me game from what I've seen. Which is admittedly not that much because uh, I don't want to spoil it for myself. And I know it will never come to PC. I'm just too lazy to bring the PS4 from Kate's office into the living room to play it. And I, I don't have a defense of myself. I can't say, like, yeah, this shooter just came out with it on PC. Like, I understand how the business works. I just, like, ah, I wish, I wish I had the motivation to do this one thing in particular. Now, I mean, it's not like I'm, oh, well, probably shouldn't have used all of our keys, but it's not like I'm just doing nothing in the meantime. Like, if anything, and, and this is going to make me sound like a better person than I am, but... My, my life is sort of backwards in that I work too much and then I have to budget free time and force myself to do it, as ridiculous as that sounds. But even then, like, a lot of the time I'm like, I'm gonna force myself to stop working now so I can do my C++ homework. You know, it's, uh... I'm like an... I, I've become an anti-procrastinator in a way that might actually be deleterious to my, uh... to my well-being to some mild extent, at least. But I really should play Until Dawn. It looks like my sort of jam. Okay, good damage with your flies here. Never wonder why they... This joke has to be one that already exists. I refuse to believe that, that this is a Northern Lion original. Why do you call... There's no punchline. Why do you call the zipper part of your jeans the fly? I don't understand. I know, well, there is the Flight of the Concords joke. They call it a fly because it takes you up to heaven. But I, I'm asking from a genuine standpoint. I almost feel, oh, if we're going to take something, we should take everything. I think the proper way to handle this is this. You take the shovel, you take Spirit of the Night, and then that actually gives you one extra Spirit Heart. So we're, we did that in the right way. Even if we hadn't taken all of them, ooh, we wouldn't have been in a better position. I don't like the clicker. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's out. Why do we call it a fly? Fly does not refer to the button. Fly refers to the flap of material covering the opening or fastening of a garment. The term was originally used in England to refer to the flap on a tent, which flaps or flies when the wind blows if not tied down. This is why the English language is stupid. Because that makes perfect sense, but only in like the most idiotic conceivable fashion. Hey, uh, w w I'm an alien visiting from the planet Nebulon. Uh, what's that thing on your pants called? Uh, a fly. I'm so confused by your human customs. Isn't a fly a verb that you use uh, when you go up in the air? Oh yes, you see, we named that thing after something that looks similar on a completely different apparatus. And rather than come up with a, uh, a new name, literally trillions of possible combinations to put letters in the English language into. We just chose to use another word that normally means something completely different. All right, well, I will be dropping space nukes on you now. Thank you so much for your brevity. Um, enjoy cosmic inexistence. So I, I took uh, another fly here, basically for Beelzebub, but it's actually, in hindsight, not really very smart because we, we can already fly, which is the best part of Beelzebub. The best... Part of me as a bub is folders in your cup. You know, people make fun of that slogan, but I think it might be true. Not folders, like, but 
think like the best part of waking up is coffee. Ooh, but unless you're waking up and you're like in a hotel that has a breakfast buffet, in which case the best part of waking up is the breakfast buffet. No flipping doubt. But like, obviously like on an unironic level, the actual best part of waking up is like, wow, another day, you know, to enjoy this beautiful planet. If, if you're in a position to enjoy it, at least. You know, I know I'm not going to say that everybody's always happy when they wake up, but, you know, I'm like... When I wake up, I, I imagine there is sort of an implicit thought that's like, sweet, I'm not dead. And then it's like, I could really use some coffee. Those are the two big ones. Those are the two human emotions. I don't know if I want to buy a spirit heart. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more robust in there. Those are the big ones for me, at least. Like That and like... There's like, the Holy Trinity is sweet, I'm not dead. Whoa, I've got cold brew coffee concentrate in the fridge. I can mix into a cup of coffee and have inside of my body within the next 45 seconds. And oh my god, we got takeout yesterday and we didn't eat it all. So there's like cold takeout in the fridge that I can eat for breakfast. That's my perfect morning. I'm a weird cold food boy. Um, I'm not afraid to admit it. This is why when people suggest that I'm still a picky eater, because I go like, well, I don't think you should eat a whole bag of potato chips for dinner every night. They go, oh, NL, you're a snob. But like... In college, I got used to it, like, I would go out for dinner with my parents, you know, a couple times a month usually, because I went to university in the same hometown that I that I grew up in, although I lived off, off parents. I mean, I lived off my parents as well, which I'm very grateful for, but I also lived away from them during that time period. But anyway, the point is, um, you know, we'd go out for, like, Thai food or something like that. And then the next day, I would just eat the cold, like, bamboo shoots, rice, noodles, whatever it is, man. And I'd be the happiest person in the world. People go, oh, yeah, I ain't like cold food, cold pizza. And I'm like, nah, dude, cold pizza? That's like stage zero. When you're eating, like, cold spaghetti, which obviously is a lie because I don't even really like spaghetti. But, you know, when you're eating cold pasta, that's how you know. When you're eating a, you know, just a... Hunk of raw Swiss chalet chicken that you got left in the refrigerator. Please just stop this. That's actually a very worthwhile health upgrade. That's why I think, like, Twitter is for babies. <laughs> like, myself included, but, um, you know, when people are like, they'll have debates like, Cold pizza, is it okay? And I'm like, I mean, biologically, is 100% okay. And then people go, I mean, I realize this is also my brand, quote unquote, because of the NLSS, but, you know, they're like, if you have pineapple on a pizza, it's sacrilege. The creator of having pineapple on pizza said that having pineapple on pizza was bad, and then he died. And you're like, okay, well, here's the thing. I'm just going to enjoy the thing that I enjoy. I will argue with you about the absurdity of it. Like, when we talk about... Someone's like, oh, my favorite sandwich is like a grilled cheese sandwich on a pita. I would be like, you gotta tell me more about the way you live your life, because it's absurd. And I want to know, from a place, from a human curiosity level, I want to know why you're eating grilled cheeses on a pita. That's very strange. Maybe you're onto something, probably not, but tell me more. Or whenever someone's like, you know, Gordon Ramsay doesn't like pineapple on a pizza. I'm like, That's, I'm never gonna eat pizza with Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay is not the inventor of food. Is it you realize the dude was born in like 1960? There was food before that. People were making, you know, ham and bananas hollandaise. Serving it at their uh, Tupperware parties. I don't care what Gordon Ramsay thinks of pizza. Pizza is not a, an English food to begin with. I'm not saying it's a Canadian food either. I'm just saying, you know, it's like, hey, um. Gordon Ramsay, what's acceptable in a pad thai? Uh, chicken and bananas. Gordon Ramsay, you're not from Thailand. You don't get to be an authority on all foods just because it's all, I know, I understand. I like Gordon Ramsay to begin with. Spent far too much money in one of his steakhouses one time. In my defense, it was my money, but part of it had come from Amazon. So, it's okay. But it's, people are like, look, exhibit A. Pineapple's not okay on a pizza. What I will say, and I, I say this to someone who probably my most consumed pizza in the last five years is Hawaiian, which is a Canadian pizza that has ham and pineapple on it. But anyway, um, 
There are some times I don't like pineapple on a pizza. Canned pineapple on a pizza is like a little too sweet. But if it's, it doesn't, I don't mean that it has to be like the freshest organic pineapple, but something about like, sometimes you order like a pineapple pizza and you're like, this is literally like from a, a can of pineapples that was in syrup. This is weird, ish. But uh, anyway, I digress. My opinion on the pizza argument of pineapple on a pizza is uh, that you should get whatever you like. And if you're being like a fascist about pizza ingredients, you can buy your own freaking pizza, okay? That's the thing, like if we're, if there's two of us, let's say there's like four people, two of them want pineapple, two of them don't, and they're all trying to decide on one pizza, and one group is like, well you, you can't have olives on a pizza. It's not that they don't like them, it's like you can't have them, it's not a real pizza doesn't belong, even though this pizza place has been in business for 82 years and it's their top seller. Doesn't belong. And you know what? Order your own pepperoni pizza, you freaking baby. I'll tell you what, babe. I'll pick up the pineapple pizza tab. You and I can enjoy it together. We seem like kindred spirits. You guys enjoy your... Oh, I, I only like pizza with the garlic bread crust. Can we get... But I only like... It's like the one of us always lies, one of us always tells the truth meme. Trying to get these fascists to order pizza together. One of us only locks original hand-tossed crust, and one of us only locks deep dish. Call in the, the hostage negotiator. Can we all agree? Just one step forward. We all want tomato sauce. Yeah, but like a pesto can be good. Just uh, come on, meet me in the middle here. I'm a mediator, not a meat eater. <laughs> Just not a good joke for one, but anyway. Alright, so we're, we're close to death, um, but we have a respawn that's great. So we actually, at this point, and especially with an eternal heart existing, I think we should just, you know, bow out and, and let ourselves respawn as Dark Judas. So, I mean, that actually worked out kind of nicely, even though I didn't mean to die right there. And this run is actually, it's kind of a, I haven't talked about it in like three floors here, but it's a little bit of a dangerous run. Um, of a, uh, archetype, at least. It's a dangerous archetype of a run. And I say that because it tricks you into thinking you're completely set. But we're probably completely set long term. In the short term, variants could put us in a bad spot. If I play badly, take some bad damage before Dark Bomb can get us up to, you know, like eight spirit hearts, anything could happen. But, you know, we're, we're already at four spirit hearts and. Effectively at 5 HP, so we're we're closing in on uh, Being very very strong here, and this is the depths too. like these have been easy runs today easy runs and very very fast So I shouldn't be uh, Too perturbed I think misplaced, but it's fine It's only like a 25% chance of getting the spirit heart out of it anyway, and that's unlikely to matter uh, We don't really care about the IV bag. But anyway, that's... I, there's a couple discussions that, like, I think... Even with the perfect NLSS loadout... They've just overstayed their welcome and it's hard to talk about now. One of them is daily counter etiquette, admittedly. And I'm guilty of bringing that up more often than I should. Another one is, is blank a sandwich? Now that it's become a re normie meme... Uh, it's just like, I get these tweets, people send me like, you know, uh, are, is a piece of bread on the top of the earth at the North Pole and a piece of the bread on the bottom of the earth at the South Pole a bread, or an earth sandwich, and I go, oh, I don't, honestly, I don't care. We've, <laughs> we've crossed that line. I'm more interested in discussing the differences between us, like, for example, why I'm, I'm so attached to the idea of being an adult and why, you know, Rob cooks five-star meals and then serves them on paper plates and then argues that that's objectively the right choice because doing the dishes takes 10 seconds um, the div cuz I kind of see oh I think you go for it the reason I make fun of that is because I, I see my younger self in that to be honest with you it's it's eat, serving all your meals on paper plates is the epitome of like work smart not hard but for impotent reasons it's just like, 
it's it's more valuable on I feel like a, an adult level, and you may disagree with me on this, and that is such as you're right. Um, to get used to doing a chore that takes five minutes if you do it every day, than it is to come up with a bad way to circumvent it that is also harmful for the environment. But anyway, that's like another aside that makes it almost too real. But you get the idea. All right. That's more of what I'm interested in. I don't care about food classification. That's why I always want a description of ingredients when I order food. If it's like a ham sandwich. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. But I, I understand what that means. What that implies, at least. But I don't care, you know, if, oh, our pizza has, you know, croissants on it. I'd be like, that's weird. I've never had a pizza with croissants on it. But I am not brave enough to suggest that it should not be okay. Maybe your croissant pizza is actually fantastic, you freaking weirdo. That's that's my two cents, Larry Larry King. Anyway, food classification is boring. I'm you know what's interesting to me is like I was at the grocery store the other day. And I was trying to think of where I would expect to find batteries at a grocery store. And it, like, the truth of the situation is that I just, I was like, they're gonna be near the front somewhere. We have like a built-in from, well, not built-in like from birth, but from being in the grocery store enough. If you asked me where I would expect to find an item I have never purchased in the grocery store, I think I could pinpoint it to within one or two aisles. It's like we have a grocery store neural network in our own brains that just tells us where we would ex we would expect to be expecting to find a food. Like if you were like, where can I find jasmine rice? I would be like, oh, that's got to be in the international foods aisle. Or possibly the bulk section, but, you know. Where would I find, um, tampons? Oh, that, well, I mean, obviously that's in either the pharmacy or the hygiene aisles. I'm trying to think of an example that's a little bit better, but sometimes, like, I'll look at, uh, grocery lists. My wife has placed something on there that I've never purchased at a grocery store before. You'd be amazed how easy it is to find most of the time. But I thought batteries were a good example. I was like... I expect them to be over here. And you know where they were? They were over there. I, I The same thing should apply but doesn't when it comes to finding a bathroom at a restaurant. I don't know if anybody else has this exact same, like, situation that happens. But whenever I'm in a restaurant and I have to go to the bathroom, it's like, I'm Indiana Jones and it's a quest for the crystal throne. Or the porcelain throne. You know, I'm going around like, you know, dun 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 oh, staff only, okay, dun dun dun, that's the broom closet, dun 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 dun, hey guys, keep up the good work, didn't mean to accidentally go into your kitchen, dun 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 dun, out the back door, round the corner, there's a shared bathroom in the hotel that's attached to the dining room, you know, it's, it's not always confusing, but it's always like, confusing at a new restaurant, you go in and you go, where's the bathroom? Sometimes they're like, oh, they're nice, and they say it's back there. There was this one place we ate at in Seattle once. We asked where the bathroom was, and they're like, you have to leave the restaurant. And then there's like a code for this door, and you open it up, and then you take the elevator up to the second floor, and there's the bathroom. It was a, it was a sushi restaurant that shared its locale with a, like a boutique hotel or something like that. And they're like, yeah, you, there's a bathroom on the public bathroom on the second floor of the hotel. Isn't that like a health code violation or something? I'm not, I'm just throwing it out there. I was not having an emergency at the time. But if I were, I would have been very displeased about the situation at hand. Oh, you gotta take Capricorn. And I think that worked out probably for the best, although we could have enjoyed having Mom's wig as well. I'm not saying that the restaurant should be shut down. I'm just saying, like... I thought that was like one of the things you have to, even if you go into like a, it's like a little 15 square foot taco stand, it's like there's got to be a bathroom. I don't know if that's true actually, because there's like pop-up falafel carts and stuff like that in Vancouver and they don't have bathrooms, at least not for public use. Which is fair, but 
I will take Shoop de Whoop. As far as I'm concerned, Shoop de Whoop, Shears, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, both very useful. We're probably not gonna fight Hush on this one, and the reason for that is very simple. I fought Hush on the last run. You know what? Let's go Shears. It's more fun. We fought uh, Hush on the last one, and it was fine, but I have an excuse, so. <laughs> We, we've done our hush quota. I haven't been doing as many dailies lately Because um, I don't know if I'm kind of phasing out dailies like I like dailies, but I Think that they are less well liked than Than uh, Non dailies not by a ton necessarily, but but by the majority I believe um, so if we're only going to be doing one Isaac episode a day, you know, from from some point onwards in the in the not so distant future, uh, we should get used to not doing dailies. And you know, it, it does it atrophies your competitive skill in Isaac a little bit, but you know, that's fine. I'm not Yarmer Yager. I'm not going to be playing, you know, speed running Isaac when I'm 50 probably. Although I've said expressions like that before, and then the time has come and gone, and I'm still playing this game, so it's it's possible that'll bite me in the butt at some point in the future. We'll see. I understand it as well, by the way. I'm not an esports athlete, quote unquote. So, um, I'm, I'm. You're here for the commentary, for the most part. I think is is what I'm trying to suggest. So, I think the commentary tends to be better in these episodes. You get a little glimpse into the slice of Northern Lion's life, and that's okay. That's that's it's it's a good thing to reveal my psychosis. Um, we should have taken this in here just in case it's per throw, but I'm assuming, uh, you know what, actually, buy them both. Be, be risky. We're gonna find a use for plan C. Giving us plus one damage. He's done it. That's how you do it, boys and girls. Plus one damage for free. No, it's, uh, it's a new character I'm trying out. He's called the world's most annoying dude. You'd be stupid not to buy a car. It's free money. Anyway. So I guess it's just just guy who's wrong about things. <laughs> you can get more annoying than that. I don't know where I'm taking this character. That's the thing. The character we did on the NLSS on Thursday was well, probably like maybe two Thursdays ago now. Because, you know, backlogging situation. But, like, an I ice T who's really... Like, no longer counterculture. Especially good because I don't really know how to do a nice tea impression. But everyone in chat told me it wasn't that bad. At least hits the notes, you know? Ice tea, but instead of, you know, being a cop killer, he's like, Millennials have to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. That's what I did. They could buy a house if they stop buying so much avocado toast. And going a little hard on the iced tea lisp. I know that's part of the that's part of the character, but it's going too far. Maybe you could afford a house if you stop buying so many frappuccinos. That's the I'm working on it, at least. It needs it needs a straight man for that for that bit to work, I think, because otherwise it just becomes like uh, it, almost like a little too real. There's no... There's no... Like, it doesn't get... Bounced into absurdity. It just becomes the ramblings of... Of a, of a crazy person, effectively. Dude, come on, though. No, no deal with the devil. I was ready to go over the top here. Like Sylvester... Yeah, like Sylvester Stallone in that movie. <laughs> We're both part of the greatest generation. Ice-T, you're not part of the... <laughs> characterized version of Ice-T. You're not... Part of the greatest generation. That's the, the people who fought in the Second World War. Yeah, I did that. See, now I'm starting to just wonder if this guy's okay. Yeah, well, you gone a little too far now, Northern Line. It's kind of like a weird Jeff Dunham bit, but without the puppet. And also, this is now a Mike Tyson impression, but not a very good one. Kind of lost the plot there, but that's okay. You know, it's the second video of the day, so you should, that's where things start to deteriorate. Eh, we're popping on Susrun. Doesn't bother me in the least. I mean, we're pretty much, you know, very good to go as long as we get enough red hearts to keep ourselves uh, stocked on uh, dark bum pickups. It's an expression that doesn't really make that much sense, but... Let's get into 
job done. What are we looking for? Anyway, I mean, we don't want Shoop the Whoop because we've already had Shoop the Whoop and we rebuked it to stick with uh, the Shears, which actually I think is working out just fine as you would as you would expect. And we should have taken the Shears. Like I think we made the right decision there, if only because the Shears is probably roughly as great but much rarer. Like Shoop the Whoop probably shows up like once every four runs. The Shears, by virtue of the fact that it is not. Um, an item or a drop that you can get from a boss is is a little bit on the rarer side. Although, not like unseen, of course. Thank you, thank you. Um, three of the same pill. Now that's where things start to interest me. They're all speed downs. Oh wow, that was... Uh, well, you know what? Thanks a lot. You've helped me appreciate what I got. The paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Farmer, farm... Wait, Edmund, Edmund, put away the... Minus speed. I don't care about that, son. My pace. Leave me the... DPS, please. That's a big whiff. Okay, that was almost a catastrophe. People were almost entertained by me dying on the void, which I do not accept. Curse of the blind, huh? So this means, for sure, cursed eye. Close. Curse of the Tower. Actually, we got like four amazing items. Sad Bombs, Miter, Tech X, and Deadshot. Or Deadeye. I'm not exaggerating. I think that's pretty close to a 10 out of 10. As far as, uh... As far as... Chest items can go. Every single one of them has like, merit. Uh, Sad Bombs is kind of not as good because of Tech X. But, apart from that, like, this is... Kind of ridiculously amazing. Uh, Black Rune, I don't know. Hey, we should pick it all up, because they could be luck upgrades. No luck upgrades whatsoever. I'm not mad, just, uh, just disappointed, of course. Two more Spirit Arts. Okay, we're officially in, like, can't lose territory. I wouldn't mind, like, homing tears. Did Infamy just protect us or something there? Wouldn't mind, like, homing tears, but we're going to win regardless. Also, like, an increased rate of fire could be cool, but we're almost at, like, tap shooting point anyway. Bob's Curse is fine. Yera, uh, we should use to, like, double our next chest. And then we're hoping these are both actives. Hushy's not an active, but we do have a good reason to use Black Rune. Although it screwed our Yera up. And gave us a range upgrade! Look who we got our range on now. More like a rage upgrade, because I just traded a Yara rune for something that's completely worthless to me. But dude, the gods of Isaac have been very kind today. I've done two runs, and the first run was Brimstone Mom's Knife on like a super stacked Maggie run. And then this one... Kinda lost the plot a little bit around like the depths, but still went extremely fast. Uh, and also gave me a good chance to make a second life as Dark Judas, which, you know, you don't always get second chances in life, so I really respect and appreciate that uh, they hooked me up here. Hey, Waz. Cannot do anything for us. So, yeah, you know, what's your comment of the day for this episode? It's very easy. Uh, what is and isn't okay on a pizza? If you answer this question honestly, you're banned from my comment section forever. Let people enjoy pizza. It's like one of the few beautiful things left on this planet. It's customizable. It's Pizza's like culinary jazz, man. However you like it, that's the best way. Oh, I'm with you. Whenever people go, you know, oh, I, I love steak. I eat a lot of ribeyes. You know, they're $15 each and then I cook them until they're... No light can escape from them because they've become a black hole. You know, I'm not into that. I think you're wasting a good cut of meat, but it is your right. But pizza is a tapestry. Sure, if you're like, I put poop on my pizza, that's obviously a logical extreme. But anyway, oh, that's a stretch and a half. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. Uh, your support helps out a great deal. It sincerely does. And I'll see you next time.